Good evening, friends and viewers. Um, today I'm back, I think, after a little longer time, but uh, this is something which I'm sure most of us as educators are going to uh, understand. And uh, I won't say you will enjoy, but I'm sure you will, you know, probably take one of the leaves and uh, incorporate my ideas uh, in your classrooms. So, uh, I'll uh, not take too much of your time because this presentation happens to be a little longer one. Uh, so uh, I'll just start off. Uh, welcome to my channel, Eloquent English Enterprise. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much uh, to my live audience for liking today's uh, webinar. I'm uh, uploading this as a separate recording because there's a lot of disturbance when a live webinar is being uh, telecast. So, uh, I'll start off with the presentation. And the topic for today is the integration of technology in the classroom, all right? So uh, as educators, how do we integrate technology in our classrooms? We, we are all aware of technology, what it is, but if I ask uh, you, uh, you know, uh, a question that what exactly is technology? I'm sure we won't be able to define it. Why you? Probably I'll also not be able to give a very, very uh, pertinent or relevant kind of a definition, right? Exact definition, I mean to say. So let's see what technology is and what is it all about. Yeah, so what is technology? The first question is that, okay, we are talking about incorporation of technology in our classrooms, but what exactly is technology? So let's understand this first. Uh, technology generally refers to the application of scientific knowledge and uh, tools into what all uh, I'm discussing in general first and we'll come to educational technology later, okay? So we use it to solve our practical problems, to enhance our efficiency, and also uh, to meet human needs. Like, like for example, uh, practical problems. If you have to cut your nails or cut your hair, you won't be able to tear it or just simply use your hands, okay? We'll need uh, scissors, we'll need a nail cutter, uh, or probably we'll need a knife or something. So uh, technology, or the machines that we've generated through technology, they help us to solve our practical problems. To enhance your efficiency, like for example, I am a lady, I have to do cooking at home. So if I put up dal in a normal uh, vessel and I put it on uh, fire, it's going to take hours to get cooked. But if I use a pressure cooker, though maybe the taste is not as good, but my dal gets cooked in a jiffy. Um, other things also like... Uh, as being a lady, I can only talk about the kitchen. Like uh, we use air fryers to avoid fat in our food. So air fryers make the food tasty and crisp and worth eating without the use of oil. Uh, other things like uh, to enhance our efficiency, you know, when we go out um, in, in the cold, we have uh, nice uh, warm clothing. All of these come through technology, okay? To meet human needs, there are so many things that we require to live. Uh, in summers, we need uh, fans and ACs and coolers and all these things, all these gadgets. In the cold season, we need heaters, we need geysers, we need warm clothing. So technology has advanced and now they've become basic needs. Okay, initially they were not, but today these, these are very, very normal requirements, but we as humans do need them. So technology makes our lives easier and more efficient. Okay, now uh, technology encompasses a very broad range of innovations. As I just said, there are so many innovations and inventions which have taken place in the past. And what are all these? Again, I'll go through this very quickly. We have electronic devices like uh, TVs and uh, we have laptops, we have um, tablets, we have Kindles. Then we have software, whatever software we require as per uh, our needs, we use that. We have machine systems to make things. So all of these things are uh, very, very normal and easy to use in today's times. Then, um, sorry, okay. 
all these machines and uh, technical devices are designed to facilitate what all communication i'm talking to you maybe you are not uh, in india i'm i'm speaking from one of the states of india maybe you are in dubai maybe you are in the uk maybe you are in the us but you can see my video anywhere so i can communicate to people who are far far away okay beyond my personal reach also uh, technology helps us to automate processes like making of cheese or extracting uh, an ore from uh, a metal from its ore and to improve the overall quality of life so technology is rampant in every sphere of our lives right so uh, <clears throat> That's what I'm trying to say, that uh, technology encompasses a very broad range of innovations and it touches all aspects of our lives, daily lives. It plays a crucial role in the modern classrooms as well. Now, how does technology play a crucial role in our modern, modern classrooms? Firstly, it facilitates personalized learning. Now, in every class, there are different kinds of children. Some are uh, fast learners, some are slow learners, some are like mediocre. It depends. And there are a whole lot of uh, reasons for the difference uh, in the capabilities of our children. So if we have technology, like earlier, uh, a teacher had to handle a class of say 40 or 50 students, she could not, she or he could not pay attention to individual students, because not even if you calculate an average, uh, they didn't have even a single minute for every Child. But today, because of technology, they can reach out to their children even when they are at home. Okay, so uh, they of course have to give extra time to their teaching uh, over and above what they are giving in the classroom. But then these children who need extra help are very few. So I'm sure teachers can take out time and facilitate personalized learning. Then uh, technology makes complex subjects more engaging. Like in our times, when we were students, we had nothing except textbooks to refer to. And textbooks also had just simply, uh, they had uh, pictures. Okay, the pictures did not move. So <clears throat> if uh, our teacher was teaching a circulatory system or how do we breathe, how do the lungs expand, it was all left to our imagination. We had to think, okay, okay, lungs expand, how? But we could not visualize what lungs look like. We were just told there are bags inside, you know, but bags, what kind of bag? School bag or a carry bag? What What exactly did my teacher mean by bag? So everything was left to our imagination. But today, your teachers, I mean, we as teachers, as facilitators, as educators, we have a whole lot of tools to our credit. We can use videos, we can use presentations and so many more things. Okay, so now the child is not left to wander. Okay, they can actually see the thing happening. So complex subjects which were difficult to understand earlier, they have been made simpler and easier to understand. The third important uh, role which uh, technology plays in our modern classrooms is that it fosters a deeper understanding of concepts. Earlier things were just, you know, rote learning was um, given a lot of importance. Uh, the children did not understand basic concepts. Okay, so today, because of our technology, which plays an important role, we make the children understand the basic concept and then we leave it to them to analyze it and incorporate it or use it in their daily lives later on. So they learn how to analyze a certain concept which is being taught to them, which is very, very important for deeper learning and for learning which stays. Okay, deeper understanding of knowledge. Collaboration is also promoted because now we do not believe in individual study. Uh, I'm sure most of you who have studied in the 80s and 90s would agree with me that in our classrooms, we were told, keep quiet, do not talk, don't talk. Anybody who spoke to each other, they were punished, they were put out of the classroom or some other kind of punishment was given. But today we want our children to talk. We want them to collaborate. We want them to exchange their ideas. And that is how they learn in a better manner. Earlier, there were no study buddies. Parents also said, no, exam time. You're not going anywhere. Sit back. Don't meet your friends. Sit down, study. 
But uh, everybody failed to realize that when two children sit together or two or more children sit together, the understanding becomes easier because A can teach something to B, B can teach something to C and C can teach something back to A. Okay, so when they collaborate, when they talk, when they study, when they discuss things together, they, their understanding becomes easier, deeper, and uh, it, it remains everlasting. So uh, I feel personally also that collaboration is something which is really important. And it's good that today in our 21st century, the four C's are being promoted. Okay, uh, creativity, critical thinking, uh, collaboration and communication. So collaboration forms a major part of the most important techniques of 21st century education. Also, technology provides, uh, uh, you know, the educators with tools for so many different things. Uh, efficient assessment, data analysis, and personalized feedback. Okay, now assessment. After you have taught something, you definitely need to assess how much or what kind of learning has been there amongst your students. So uh, technology makes you uh, assess your children in different ways. It's not just rote learning. It's not just, uh, you know, marks given on certain question answers, but you can uh, have your assessment in different ways. Then you can analyze that data. You can analyze the results of your assessment and then on that on the basis of that assessment you can give personalized feedback to the child and to his or her parents so uh, today because of technology even educators have been um, able to get so many tools to play a better role as educators okay modern educational technology contributes to more effective teaching strategies right uh, earlier, again, as I said, teachers were only using textbooks or maybe the blackboard. There were hardly any teaching aids uh, in our classrooms. But today, uh, let me apologize. My uh, laptop is playing truant today. It changes the slide before I can do it. So please bear with me. Okay. And in today's uh, ra rapidly evolving, uh, you know, uh, uh, digital era, Integration of technology in the classrooms, it, it prepares students for the future, the essential skills that they, they need as future uh, uh, citizens of any country. All right. So uh, we, we need this technical advance so that we can make our children develop in the right manner. The, the overall development, as we say, the holistic development of our students will only be possible today when we uh, make use of technology in our classrooms. Okay, so technology tra has transformed the teaching and learning of today. How? So it has changed our mindset and this mindset is now uh, moving towards growth. Earlier people had this kind of mentality that they were like frogs in a well. They thought teachers just know whatever they know and there's no need to develop it further. But now even teachers have to evolve. They have to continuously brush up their knowledge because if they do not brush up their knowledge, they won't be able to uh, make uh, peace with the kind of um, requirements of their students, right? Uh, the kind of mindset uh, which they want their children to develop, they have to develop it first themselves. Secondly, uh, we have to shift our perspective and uh, think about continuous learning, as I just mentioned, that if we want our children to evolve, firstly, we have to evolve as uh, educators. Then the most important thing is how to align technology with our learning goals. I may be an English teacher, you may be a science teacher, another one can be a social studies teacher. So how do we use technology towards our learning goals? All right. This is uh, a factor which we have, uh, which we really have to give a lot of thought to. Okay. And another thing, when we are talking of technology, we should not just get caught up uh, in the uh, with the latest gadgets because you know gadgets are also continuously uh, changing, evolving. Uh, in the eighties, we had a fixed line telephone. Then came the age of pagers. All right, then came normal, uh, you know, uh, uh, phones, normal mobile phones. After that came the Android and now Android has also changed. Even the iPhones keep evolving every year. So we cannot stick to a particular 
kind of technology or some kind of gadget because that also keeps evolving. So we have to integrate, we have to integrate this knowledge in a seamless manner. That is without any bumps or breaks. So this has to be a very smooth kind of a process. We have to uh, use technology in a very smooth manner so that we can achieve our teaching and learning goals more effectively, more efficiently. So for example, Let's take, uh, we have to boost the engagement and interaction of children. Because when you hear something, you forget it immediately. When you see something, you do remember it for some time. But when you do it yourself, you remember it for a lifetime. So that is what we want. We want our children to do things themselves so that their learning is lasting and permanent. So what all can we make use of in our classrooms? Interactive whiteboards. Uh, I need not introduce it. I'm sure most of the schools are using it. So here children can, you know, jot down their ideas. Somebody comes, write something. Another one comes, he or she writes something. So a lot of interaction can be done. You, we can even play games. You can even play spelling games. Okay, four rows, A, B, C, D. Children come, give a word. Uh, a member from each of the lines writes the spelling. So then you can make a score for the, towards the end. Okay. Then we have digital games and simulations. Earlier, I also personally thought it was just a waste of time, but no, it's not. These kinds of games, they improve the eye and hand coordination of children. Then polls and quizzes are a very, very important part. Here, you don't only get feedback of children in the form of a poll, but you can also have a kind of quick assessment by having a short quiz that you can easily make on your Google Forms. Again, we have to enhance uh, uh, differentiation and pers uh, personalization through technology. Because as I mentioned earlier, we have children with different abilities and also everything needs to be personalized. For example, if I teach, if I'm teaching in a class that you know a, a butterfly feeds on the nectar of a flower, children have seen it in gardens. But have they actually seen how a butterfly extracts nectar from the flower? No. So if I, like my teacher would say that it has got a tongue or it has a, you know, kind of a body part, which is known as a proboscis, it's a tubular structure. It uh, extends it into the flower, puts it in the center of the flower, and then it sucks the nectar. So the child will probably think pipe, tube, what? It's not easy to kind of visualize, but I can show it today. I have the ability, I have the tools to show the children that, okay, this is the way a butterfly takes nectar from the flower. So we have adaptive learning platforms, like whatever is required in that particular situation, we have those kinds of tools that can be used. Online tools and resources, I was just mentioning, it's not just videos, but even online, you have live uh, things also, which can be seen. Like for example, if I'm teaching social studies, I can take my children directly to the top of Eiffel Tower. I can take them to the pyramids of Egypt. I can take them uh, to the, uh, you know, the coral reef of Australia. So uh, this way, you know, through Google Earth, I can make my students take a virtual tour of any uh, monument or any part of the world. The third thing... Uh, which technology helps us uh, in the enhancement of differentiation and personalization is to give our children the, uh, the freedom to have creative expression. Give them the liberty to do whatever they want. Give them a, 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 a time, a place, and uh, you know, a, a platform where they can show their creativity. Okay, give them a piece of paper and anything you tell them and ask them to make something you'll be surprised to see how creative children are and what all they can make, even from things which you or I may feel are useless. Then technology also helps us in the promotion of collaboration and communication, which I just mentioned are uh, two essential parts of 21st century teaching techniques. So we can have collaborative documents and presentations where different children play different roles as per their abilities. Somebody can write a script, somebody can speak it out. Other people can get maybe uh, some kinds of uh, uh, background uh, things like uh, we call them, you know, uh, a kind of stage decoration or uh, 
uh, somebody can probably make uh, what you write, you know. Uh, sometimes, you know, words don't come to me. Uh, when, when you have to write something, you know, uh, on a poster, something, you know, a lot of uh, creativity can be done. Somebody can uh, uh, create background music, right? Slogans, <laughs> the word which was eluding me, slogans, you know, so they can write slogans or titles or they can make, um, uh, you know, cards to invite people. So lots of things, different roles can be played by different students in the same class as per uh, their abilities. All right. So when they put their ideas together, what you get to see is something brilliant and excellent. Online discussion forums are the in thing. I'm talking to you through an online forum. I don't know where you're sitting. You don't know exactly where I am sitting, but we can exchange our ideas. Similarly, video conferencing and virtual field trips, which I just mentioned, uh, which are possible through Google Earth. All of these things have become a mandatory part of our classes today, of our education system. All right. Now, also, before I end, let me remind you that we human teachers can never be eliminated. Whatever AI may come, whatever kind of machine learning may uh, come into our classrooms, but the humane touch of the teacher can never ever be replaced by artificial intelligence. Technology can never, and it should never replace the teacher because teachers are definitely amazing. And we know how much we owe to our teachers for uh, being wherever we are today. So let's uh, focus on uh, these aspects of modern education. The first thing is critical thinking. Um, teach your children how to think differently, how to think out of the box and uh, focus on the spirit of inquiry. Because till you are not inquisitive about anything, you will not work towards it. So the spirit of inquiry or inquisitiveness are most important, which we need to develop amongst our students. We must make them ask questions. Earlier teachers used to get offended when children ask questions, but today, no, I'm happy if a student asks me a question. Thirdly, we must uh, remember to reflect. Okay, children should definitely reflect on whatever was taught to them in a particular class on a particular day. Because when they reflect, then they may find something missing or maybe they would want to add something to it. So when they reflect, it's not only just revision, it is, it gives them a better understanding of the concept. Then the fourth thing is to adapt. Okay, the, the world is changing. The situations keep changing, the circumstances keep changing. So children should be given the ability to adapt just as plants and other animals adapt to the environment. Similarly, we as uh, teachers and uh, must teach our children to adapt to new situations and circumstances. And last but not the least, collaboration and communication because now we are not living in, in a huge world, now we live in a small world where we can reach out to anybody, anytime, anywhere. Okay, so collaboration and communication form a very essential part of our teaching methodologies today. But also we have to teach the concept of digital citizenship to our students. And what does this mean? That they should be aware about the hackers, about the lurking dangers when they go online. They must keep their uh, individuality incognito. They must learn to not to disclose personal information on the net. And uh, they should not follow any link which is sent to them. So this kind of protection on the internet is essential. We must make our children understand the importance of their own safety while they are on the net when they're using the internet, okay, for their own benefit. Okay, so last, uh, let's discuss integrating technology effectively in the class. How do we do it? We need to be very careful when we plan our lessons. We should have a very thoughtful implementation. And also we must let our students know that we are committed to your continuous learning. Because when they believe in you, only then will they believe in what you teach. So what do we need? We have to be careful planners. We have to be very good implementers of whatever we've decided. And also we should assure our children that we are committed to their uh, progress and uh, good 
results and their personal gains towards uh, the, the end of a session. So we as educators, we need to learn to transform our classrooms into dynamic and a very, very stimulating kind of environment. They should not be dull. It should not be boring. It should be a place where children love to come to understand and learn new things and new concepts. Here, in this kind of a stimulating and dynamic environment, learning is not just effective, but it is also long lasting and impactful. So as teachers, we need to promise ourselves that this is the kind of environment, this is the kind of classroom that we are going to promote in our times. So to conclude, remember the possibilities as far as technology uh, and its integration in the classes is concerned, it's endless, the possibilities are too many. We need to explore and experiment and we must learn to enjoy technology. You should have fun with technology. Like here, I can see this little cartoon. It's trying to, uh, you know, move up on a snowy slope. And here there are books which are continuously growing that shows that learning is never something which can end. It is always growing. It will always keep on moving ahead. Learning will never stop. So let technology be a tool which empowers you and your students to reach newer heights, to reach greater heights in learning and discovery of new things in all the times to come. So thank you so much viewers for being with me over here today. And uh, I shall stop sharing now. Um, so this was a presentation as far as uh, the uh, you know um, integration of technology is concerned in our educational scenario. I hope you liked it. If you did, do give me some good comments in the comment box. Any questions, if you have, please do not hesitate to write to me uh, through the comment section. And I'll make it my endeavor to answer all your queries. Thank you for being over here. Thank you, new subscribers. I'm happy to see the number of subscribers grow. I think uh, for me, this is a big, big achievement. So till I come back and see you again. It's goodbye, good night from Eloquent English Enterprise and of course, Archana Mathur. Bye-bye, take care.